Hey everyone, welcome to the TRR Artist Series. My name is Jonathan Michelle, and I'm here with Peter McCarran and Dave Santoro. We're gonna be talking about their new album, Subconscious Love. Okay. Now, how did No Quartet come come together? Is that like over the years, it kind of like became a thing, or did you like kind of sit down one day and say, hey, let's do this thing, no chords? Yeah. Well, he could tell you his version first. <laughs> Well, it's easier to work without a, with the less people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times a, a club won't have a, a good piano. Yeah. So um, it just we, we started working with, with in a chordless format, but we always liked that. We, we were always drawn to, you know, Ornette um, and Sonny, those, mm -hmm. you know, chordless groups and other yeah. ones. So um, it just kind of naturally, you know, morphed into, into a group. Mm -hmm. Um, and George Sovak, who's a saxophonist on the album, is another right. friend of ours from the area. Mm -hmm. Terrific musician. And um, we just, it just kind of really was natural and felt great. Yeah. Now, I had been playing, we had been playing together in the, the 90s with a sextet every week at the Gilson in mm -hmm. Winston. Mm -hmm. And so we had, um, you know, that was with electric piano because there was right. no piano. Mm -hmm. And trumpet, trombone, and saxophone. So we had already had a, uh, you know, good basis for how we wanted to proceed mm -hmm. after that. So when this came along, we were looking for a little bit more of an open sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a bass player, it's a, it's a different way of dealing because you have to really lay out the harmony. Everybody's got to be able to find out where you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also gives me the opportunity to play like some pianistic things on the bass. Mm -hmm where you would normally do that in a, a group with a pianist. Right. It just, it's a different way of dealing with the music. So um, I think it gave us a lot. Then we uh, played at the Gilson again, just for as a cordless format. Mm -hmm. And we really developed a lot of stuff during that time period. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the guys in the band a bit. And Tom and I have had a fairly long career together too, mm -hmm. like 20 something years. Yeah. So I've been playing Tom with Tom for years, and um, it was instantly the minute we started playing, it was a hookup. Yeah. So it was like again, like a kindred spirit rhythmically. I could count on Tom, and he was always. It's kind of he's kind of a throwback to an age where the drummers played my favorite periods of drummers. Mm -hmm. He always was had a similar thing to Billy Higgins, which yeah. you don't hear many drummers play, mm -hmm. and Philly Joe, mm -hmm. and, and then you know some Elvin stuff. All my favorite drummers yeah. rolled into one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I also played with Tom with, uh, you know, in various other groups with other people, so it was always sometimes cordless, sometimes with mm -hmm. chords. Yeah. So I knew we could trust him, and you know, it's it not just trust, I knew what he was gonna bring. Mm. Yeah. He's got big ears. It's amazing when he, he's such a great musician. Um, he do, he hears everything that's going on and and supports it, and yeah. also leads you too. Mm -hmm. He's a pretty interesting he, player. When he he understands that when somebody needs to form indexed, he's right there. When they want to play over the top, he knows how to deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. So that level of experience you do not find with. A lot of great younger drummers, mm -hmm. but they don't have what he has. Right. Mm -hmm. And now that he has, he's also had some physical problems with his hands and his feet. Mm. That is all mended, and he's playing better than I've ever heard him. Yeah. So that's great. And how about George? How did how, how did he kind of come into the fold, and what do you guys see that he brings to the to the group? Again, you know, another kindred the spirit. Seven of these I've been playing with George. Yeah, me too. Mm. And uh, and we play together. In, you know, the three of us in groups, but also, you know, as the way it is, you know, lots of different, you know, groups as well. Yeah. You've got two of my favorite Sonny Clark tunes on here. You know, um, you got a Dave Stryker tune, you've got a Jerry Berganzi tune. I mean, it, it's just like, it seems like you've just kind of pulled from like all these great classic records and some some people that you know and you're friends with and just kind of came up with this these 10 tunes i mean what was uh <clears throat> what was the thought process behind that well i'm a sonny clark freak to begin with okay yeah dave brought those those in so um and i always thought they were great 
avenues for exploring in a more open situation without the piano. Mm. <laughs> That's interesting. Then Pete brought in some great originals that like had a, a different slant yeah. to everything else we were doing. Mm -hmm. And um, and I enjoy playing those because it gives a whole nother eclectic side of us that we don't, mm -hmm. you know, like we all have like a little thing in there. To, right. Uh, yeah. Right, and there's a Herbie Nichols tune in there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is another piano player. Yep. We're doing in a cordless uh, format, and also a Roswell Rudd mm -hmm. tune in there, also from his yep. Molly Cool album. Yep, Bamako. Yeah, man. Yeah. So the art from uh, this this album is really really dope. I mean, if you can check out the cover here, and then the the inside kind of is uh, keeping with the theme. Um, yeah, so you, when you guys want to take that, take that away? Well, it's, uh, the artwork is uh, my wife's, Danielle Mailer, mm -hmm. and uh, she loves uh, color and pattern, and, and she has a whole um, uh, group of symbols that she likes to use, and it, 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 more, it changes, you know. Right now, uh, recent period, as you can see on that, is the crows, mm -hmm. and so it's very important. But she also has a, a lot of influences um, that are similar to Frida Kahlo, the uh, Mexican artist. Mm -hmm. And and Danielle is actually um, part Peruvian, so she's got that okay. South American sensibility, right. I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but she just loves to um, uh, do album covers, and yeah. I'm really happy that she loves to do it. <laughs> <laughs> she's done several for me, for other people. Mm -hmm. and, and I have to say, there's no... The product that's out there now, you don't usually see that depth of uh Absolutely. so just having a visual artist along with musical artists is, mm -hmm. is a, a great concept that i think was there in the past right but like kind of fell out of yeah with fashion like, with with the with a group like this and i think that's another thing that i noticed about about the song selection a lot of times with like a with a no chord situation it like immediately goes to like open free you know, mm -hmm. kind of timeless or lots of metric modulation. You know, like it kind of goes to that place, but it seems like a lot of this, a lot of this stuff is, is really, really song based. You know, mm -hmm. and kind of stays true to the composition. Right. So, what is that something that you guys talked about that you wanted to do, or is that did you just kind of fell into that? I don't think so. I, I think it was basically that's just. Uh, well, I know the way I grew up, it was like the song was the important part. And what's going to, you know, separate it from some other composition is staying close to the true song. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always venue. We do have venues for playing totally open. Yeah. yeah. And we use those. <clears throat> but trying to get as much contrast as we can in, in kind of a dry, it's kind of a dry setting without a chordal instrument. Right. Right. In a recorded setting, you're thinking differently than you are in a live setting. That's true. When you're in a live setting, <clears throat> exploration's there for you. It's in a moment. And to try to rec recreate that moment in the studio is never... Yeah. Yeah, you're just trying to hold it together. Somewhat, yeah, it's basically you know? everybody's getting used to playing with headphones mm -hmm. on and doing right. the thing. But it's still, you're still getting to a... And it, it's there. You know, mm -hmm. like sometimes there's... Things could be successful live or they right. can be not as successful right. but that's the nature of it you're exploring mm -hmm. and so by the time we get to the studio we've already explored usually the tunes mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. Uh, we kind of know what we're going to do and all it is is a snapshot of a day hmm. I like exactly that. I like that's that. all it's it just is. a documentation right. where we're at at that moment yeah. right. and that's it you know and whatever that is mm -hmm. the more you try to force it the, le the less that it's going to be successful uh, sure mm -hmm. Sure. And one thing about this group is it's it's very natural, mm -hmm. you know, because we're all friends, and which is kind of interesting. I mean, not that um, we you know we play in groups with other friends too, you know, mm -hmm. but there's a certain camaraderie. We've had a lot of gigs together, so there's a real. And Dave and I go back so far, and with George, there's a a certain um, level of uh, I guess trust, and we know each other so well. Well, thanks, guys. This Thank you, John. This, is a, this has been a pleasure. Uh, please check out. No Quartet's new album, Subconscious Love. You could find it uh, on our website, Truth Revolution Records. And um, thanks to Peter and Dave, and thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.